Hello and welcome to Limited Time Only, a Sora data show dedicated to limited cards and competitions. I'm Andrew Laird, and on today's episode, we're going to analyze the traditional method of determining the probabilities of winning rewards in limited competitions, understand why that method is giving us false conclusions, and explain a different process that provides more context. Limited competitions began in game week 194 with Global All-Star, and Sora has since added U23s, Champion Europe, Challenger Europe, Asia, and America, all starting in game week 196. Through game week 238, we've seen the number of entries rise considerably, from 1,700 to more than 18,000 in Global All-Star, a fairly drastic increase over five months. Given the rise in entries, it's understandable that there's been a bigger focus on the probability of winning rewards in limited competitions. More lineups means more entries to compete against for prizes, but the popular process for determining the chances of winning cards is flawed. One of the more popular methods for determining reward probabilities is simply taking the total number of rewards and dividing it by the number of entries, which theoretically provides a chance of winning a reward. Another method is to swap the numbers and divide the total number of entries by the total number of rewards to see how many so rare managers are competing for each card. To determine whether one is good or not, we want the percentage of rewards to lineups to be as high as possible, while we want the number of lineups per reward to be as low as possible because it represents fewer entries competing for each reward. Both methods can be seen in these graphs, and they give us the same conclusion. The probability of winning limited cards continues to decline. However, both of these methods fail to recognize that lineups can be submitted with cards of players who don't have a match in that game week. For example, let's say you have four outfield players with matches in a game week, but no goalkeeper. You can simply include a goalkeeper who does not have a match, take the automatic zero, and hope four players score enough points to win a reward. The success rate of these lineups is extremely low, but many managers simply believe it's better to enter with four players instead of submitting a training lineup. With that said, figuring out our realistic chances of winning rewards isn't just about the number of entries there are versus the number of rewards. It should be about the number of viable entries versus the number of rewards. Now there's no singular description for a viable entry, but an easy way to narrow it down is to examine the total number of lineups that have five players with matches, as each player can theoretically score points. Using that methodology, let's compare our previous chart that showed how many lineups per reward there were in Global All-Star with how many lineups with five players with matches per reward. Fundamentally, we want the number to be as low as possible because it means each lineup is competing with fewer other lineups for each reward. Let's dig a little deeper into the comparison because the separate charts struggle to accentuate the differences. Combining them into a single chart helps because it's easier to compare them in each game week, and it certainly looks like winning rewards will continue to get harder because of the increase in entries per reward. However, adding trend lines for each data set will show us that the increase in lineups is much greater than the increase in viable lineups. And it's the viable lineups that we should be worried about when it comes to our own probabilities of winning. While the trend lines obviously show much different growth rates, we have two outliers that kind of throw the graph off, as game weeks 231 and 235 had fewer than 25 matches in total. If we remove them from the data set, we really get to see how this significant increase in total lineups in All-Star Limited isn't really affecting the number of viable lineups each game week to the same degree. And this divergence isn't specific to All-Star either, as we see very similar situations in U23, Champion Europe, Challenger Europe, and America. So our conclusion is fairly simple. While we see more entries than ever in every limited competition, the number of viable lineups isn't increasing nearly as fast, which means our probabilities for winning rewards isn't decreasing much at all. And next time, we'll look into which limited competitions are the most competitive in terms of the probabilities of winning rewards, which could help us decide where to play our best lineups.